Man, I don't even like pipes, you know? I don't like smoking. It's weird. I, mean, like, I like... I like a lot of the rituals around smoking. You know, like I like... Having my little container of tobacco here. I even like... I like the way it smells. I like this little sort of multi-tool, you know? I like the, the feel of the tobacco in my fingers. Mm. I like all that. I love the... I love the way you, the fire of a match looks when you strike it. Like... Look at all those colors. It's amazing. And I, I pity those who are colorblind because I like just to be able to see all the beautiful colors there. See those? You know, denoting all the different temperatures of the flame. It's beautiful. But then, you know, once I light the tobacco and I, and I put it in my mouth it makes me want to vomit it's, it's one it's one of the reasons I keep this this bucket nearby um, it's one of the reasons but uh, yeah it's a little messy anyway um hi uh, Welcome to the lighthouse. Um, uh, mi, mi casa de luz es su casa de luz. Am I right? I'm not sure if that's right, but uh, you, I think you get the spirit of, of what I'm saying there is, you know, I am happy somebody else is here because it's been a couple of weeks with just me and my thoughts uh, which isn't real healthy I don't think And, you know, speaking of isolation, I see you got here. Well, either you got here with great timing or terrible timing. Depends on your point of view, I suppose. Because, you know, with the, the hunkering down, uh, staying at home, staying in your place order, we're stuck. Even if be oceans became glass tomorrow, which I'm sure, as you noticed on your ride over here, and I can tell by the pallor of your skin, it was not an easy ride. And if you need my bucket, please, you know, let me know. I'm happy to lend it to you. Um, you you got to clean it. If you if you mess the bucket, you know, you clean the bucket. That's sort of a, that's sort of an unwritten rule. It should probably be a written rule. Um, and if I knew where my pen was, I'd write it down. But, you know, the tip of, an, of a burnt match, I'll write it, use that. If 
you vomit if you how about this if you throw up you clean up how's that okay i think that's i'm gonna underline it Ooh, nice bold underlines there that that worked out well um so, you know, learn to make do with the things at hand. Um, it's something I've gotten good at in a bunch of ways, you know. Um, I ran out of my anti-nausea medication some time ago. You don't happen to have any Dramamine, do you? It's weird, you know, I, I know where stationary on this rock but when I, so there's a there's a point on the island which apart from the top of the lighthouse it's the most it's the highest point of the island um you get this what we call it we call it high point that's me came up with that um, because it's the highest point of the island. So it's, uh, it's called High Point. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's kind of a dib system. You know, it, I was here first and I named it. And so that's the way it is. Um, I named a lot of things, you know, um, Sand Beach, that's the beach over on the east side. Sand Beach is where I found the, uh, cowrie shells that I used to make this little bracelet here, uh, which I really, really, really love. Um, in fact, I'm going to put it on right now. nice and tight there yeah. but I found it on sand beach um, sand beach has has a lot of sand I don't like call things what they are you know and, you know I, I was in the middle of a story which was so you know sometimes I go up to high point I look out across the sea and it's so choppy and the horizon is so far away and, and sometimes it's just like this natural vignetting happening and it's not always like a bright moonlit night like it is today, tonight. You can see the the moon. I don't know if it's full or, or, or gibbous whatever the give us wax and gives here here's here's an idea why do we call it give us waxing give us waning you know full that's good and then like almost full and then like mostly full then half full then quarter full then new no come on that 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 moon is gone Actually, we should call that gone moon at that point. But anyway, on nights when moon is gone, um, you go out on high point, it like kind of vignettes what you can see. And it's just the choppy water. And I swear it feels like, um, like the island is not stationary I've some ideas about that um, I think I'm not a hundred percent I would say I'm 78 percent sure that this that this island 
is actually a, like a collection of rocks and moss on the back of the shell of a giant slumbering kraken. Um, one of the reasons that I one of the reasons I just generally talk softly is because we don't want to wake the kraken. Okay. Um, so I'll go up to high point. I'll feel maybe the kraken, you know, is having a bad dream, moves its back a little bit, and I just get really nauseous. Um, but like I said, I ran out of Dramamine, so I found uh, a substitute in the uh, kerosene fuel that we use to uh, power the various lamps and lanterns and the, this is a very special fuel we use for the big light um, I wouldn't advise making anything out of that by the way right yes mi casa de luz es su casa de luz pero no un punta más alto en el casa Solamente me para uh, my Spanish is not very good. Only, only I mess with the big light, okay? So we, we all have a lot of duties. Naming things, that's one of mine. Um, you know, taking care of the big light, that's mine. Maybe someday it'll be yours, but for now, it's mine. Um, and that's sort of leads me into what we have here, which is just our list of things that, you know, we do. You, you never run out of things. There's never a day that goes by uh, on this lighthouse or really any lighthouse that I've ever been a captain on of it's all because it is like a ship in a way like a static ship and in this case not even that static um, and I'm also convinced that the Kraken is moving us slowly deeper and deeper out into the Atlantic um, I'm a, I have, there's a, when I, th if you don't, just pretend I didn't say that. Um, so anyway, got just like a couple forms for you to fill out and uh, some instructions. The basic duties of the lighthouse, so like I was saying, like, you never have a day where you run out of stuff to do. It's just like a day where you've done so much that you're just too exhausted to do anymore. And, and, and that's when you stop, right? Um, I'd also ask that if you happen to be, like we don't, we eat a lot of canned food here, a lot of beans. So if your uh, flatulence overtakes you, I would ask that you either go outside or if you're inside, um, light a match. This is, this is just a demonstration match. But if it hadn't been a demonstration match, uh, you know, that would be just sort of, there's enough between the cistern, the cistern, the birds that, that keep shitting all over the sides of the lighthouse and um, the dead birds. Uh, it's, there's a lot of smells already 
here and the wind tends to like blow most of those away but here inside the lighthouse I mean I would just like to keep things as as uh, as odorless as possible um, and I'm not one of those people who thinks that like putting a smell on top of another smell gets rid of the first smell that's crazy talk right just means you smell two things but at least you know in the case of a match it's not perfume or something like that it, 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 it's sort of accurate enough that it momentarily stuns the hairs inside your nostrils um, and you know I'm, I don't know what the chemistry is of it like what the flame does to the gas but uh, anyway we're talking too much about this stuff um, so the duties that we have right um, making sure the foghorn is operational okay now the foghorn is the one exception when it comes to like loud noises that we want to have or you know um, not have going on in the lighthouse for fear of waking um, I think the foghorn has become so common that you know who has, has just sort of gotten used to it sort of tuned it out or maybe doesn't hear those particular frequencies I don't know I'll admit I don't know much about the Kraken um, I don't know that the Kraken exists um, I know that the Kraken has like a high point on its back that we call high point I know the Kraken has like a sandy beach on the eastern shore that we call sand beach um, I know that the Kraken has a lighthouse built on its back I know that the Kraken's name is Marley um, that came to me in a dream um, but I don't know everything so making sure the foghorn is operational and and that includes you know clearing it out like clearing it out a lot like the seagulls will kind of like build nests in there sometimes they'll go in there to uh, die um, lots of seagulls die around here an abnormal amount and uh, I think it's Marley's fault um, cleaning the cistern this is the least desirable job on the island um, maybe apart from feeding Marley right but um, sadly being the new kid in town uh, cleaning the cistern falls to you and it can take you know the better part of a day um, to pull all the dead stuff out of the cistern and clean all the muck out and if you don't want to be drinking that stuff we gotta get it out of there um, refueling all the tanks using the what we don't drink um, by the way just a quick little toast to you cheers would you like you want to try it you, you, later I mean don't have to, to drink it now pretty sure there's a chemical reaction between the kerosene and the copper um, that might be poisoning my mind so refueling all the tanks like for everything like I said except for don't worry about the big light uh, that is not suit Casa de Luz um, coal fire maintenance because we also have 
something's powered by coal here, so, you know, shoveling coal, um, but coal gets wet. So we don't do a lot with coal around here, but making sure that the coal we have stays dry and that the uh, coal burning fires, stoves that we have are properly maintained, that's really important. General engine maintenance, it's hard. Surviving on this island is hard. Uh, period. So we need all the help we can get. And then, you know, if there's any search and rescue missions going on, the um, the U.S. Navy Coast Guard, uh, if it's within our remit, will often ask for our assistance. And that can be just like, you know, sounding the foghorn or, you know, um, just, you know, going to high point with a telescope. Um, make sure I have a telescope right here. It's important to have a good telescope. Um, this one is a Saturn brand, which uh, when I bought it, I thought that meant that you could see Saturn. And then later, an astronomer friend of mine told me, you can see Saturn without a telescope at all. You can see it with you know, your naked eye. But um, regardless, I, this is, this telescope has done me well. It served me well. It's got a cap on the front and the back. And then you, know, you actually focus it by by pulling this in and out. And it makes sort of a pleasing click. But you, you got to be looking through it when you do this, right? Oh my gosh, you, um, you could use some kind of like, your T-zone needs a little bit of work, some kind of balanced facial cleanser, I think, might be uh, in order. I don't have any. Uh, as you can see, like I'm, you know, the sun gets to you out here, the wind gets to you out here, everything's gonna get chafed. Uh, but you just got here, so you know, you don't really have an excuse. So a good telescope, right? You can borrow mine if it comes to that. But so in search and rescue, that's that's pretty much what we're relegated to. Um, and so in broad strokes, that's pretty much it. I would like to take down some of your information, if that's all right. I may have to burn another match if this one runs low, but um, can I get your name, please? I'm gonna abbreviate that. Okay. Um, I'm just going to call you Frendo, if that's all right. Okay, Frendo. And uh, how long have you been a part of the U.S. Lighthouse Protection and Maintenance Service? Okay. You're a rookie. You're a rookie, friendo, and it's time for me. I gotta strike up another map. I'm out of ink. Time to strike up another match.
tell you, I never grow tired of it, especially if I've been drinking a lot of kerosene. The blues, like the blues at the base, and then the tip gets super red. And the orange, and there's just sort of like this just glow around it. Something else, I'll tell you. Oh, okay. All right. Let's see how that works, Gage. How long have you been in? It's good. Were you, what, what lighthouses have you served at before? Actually, I'm not going to write that down. Those names are long. I'm just curious. Yeah, all right. So, so I mean, you, you know the drill, right? Uh, have you ever been reprimanded for dereliction of duty, waking the kraken, anything like that? You've never awoken a kraken. Good to know. You know, continue that. Oh no. Okay. Just lost your years of experience there for a moment. Yeah. I I understand if you've trimmed wicks before, but it's kinda like my grandpappy used to say, where doth toil and terror merge in an unholy union of teeth grinding and gnashing, yea, the organ grinder calleth forth his foul monkey to dance paralytic and cackle, caper and wicked scampish glee to behold its reflection in a nearby looking glass and reconcile its own chiral nature wreak havoc by raining down blood and fire upon its grim realization of its own withered impotence I think you'll agree it really don't need any other explanation apart from that. Um, I'm going to put, I find you agreeable. I'm going to underline that too. I should, probably shouldn't underline so much because that really uses a lot of the Ash ink. And that's what that should be called. That should be called ash ink. Um, so a few other things you should know about this particular lighthouse. If you're ever uncertain about if you have cracked or chapped lips, take a sip of that and it'll it'll let you know right off exactly where the deep cracks are. Um, if you have a cold sore, I'd advise uh, avoiding the drink entirely. So one of the things you should know about this lighthouse, and, and this is different than other lighthouses, I have uh, served time on, is I get weird, bizarre, um, freaky dreams when I'm out here. Uh, I dream of, and it's almost every night, and they're never the same dream. I dream, although I do dream like 
thematically they're they're similar i dream of coiled snakes a lot um and we do have a snake problem on the island um you're gonna want to avoid snake marsh um for that very reason uh, and they are venomous um and there's not a whole lot I can do apart from making an incision on either side of the bite and sucking out as much of the venom as I can. Um, so try to avoid getting bitten. You have your standard issue boots. They protect you. Stay out of snake marsh. Um, you're going to want to watch for snakes in the cistern. Occasionally there are snakes in the cistern. Uh, I find I, I, I get them out with a gaff and then I, you know, stomp on their heads with my boots. Um, I have a collection of them in my bedroom if you see them hanging uh, just next to my bed. Um, Uh, oh, now that I think about it, that, that could contribute to the dreams. I think I might move them. Could I, could I move them into your, into your room? I appreciate that. If you start having dreams of snakes, uh, I'll move them again. Um, but anyway, Lots of vivid dreams out here, which frankly are a bit of a blessing because, you know, it, it, um, it helps pass the time, gives you something to think about during the waking hours, well, something to fret over during the waking hours. But either way, your, your mind is occupied, you know. Um, so if you've, if you've been on multiple lighthouses before, I don't really need to describe this very much to you uh, but you know at the tip up here you know where you're not supposed to go you have the lightning rod because you know obviously there's storms here all the time and lightning strikes the lighthouse all the time it also strikes a tree at high point uh, quite a bit so it's one of the quickest ways to find high point is you look for a tree that basically looks like it's been split into two trees. That's the tree that marks high points. Um, the cupola, you know, ours is sort of made of brass. Uh, the lantern room, which you should just never ever go into. Uh, widow's walk is what they call the sort of balcony that goes around the lantern. Again, you should never be there, so I don't really know why I'm talking about it. And then the service room beneath that, which is, you know, where I go to service the, the big light. Um, it's kind of like what I like to think of as like the, the Kraken's headlight, you know? In a way, we're warning boats about the jagged rocks around here, but also, you know, we're also keeping the Kraken from being disturbed um, by having, like, these boats run into them and stuff. Um, watch room. In time, maybe you can come up to the watch room. I'm fine with that. You know, just don't, don't get any ideas. You know, especially if you've been drinking quite a bit of this, because you can get ideas and then, you know, things will go wrong. So we have these things, which are like basically uh, glass rectangular shaped holes in the brickwork um, at varying levels throughout the lighthouse. And, and we call those windows, I think we should call them uh, glass holes. But uh, 
they were named long before I came around. Um, and then, you know, the foundation, the entrance, you, you know all that. So, uh, but this is, you know, a lot of this is just stuff I need to go through. Um, when you have free time and, you know, your breaks and your, your time is your own, you know, I would recommend exploring the island. There's not much to explore, but one of the gifts that the sea brings to us is, is well, gifts from the sea, you know, wash up on sand beach or in the rocks and rock point or, um, you know, up along the bluffs of bluff bluff. Um, and, you know, you can get stuff out of there. Like right now, uh, my sick bucket, it doubles as a bucket for getting things that I, I find in the sea when I do my sort of perimeter walks. This, this thing washed up the other day. It's like a gourd, some kind. I mean, really, we're, we're just here to pass the time, so. You can hear the dried out seeds in it. And it's got some primitive carvings. Who knows how far this traveled it looks vaguely Inuit, although I wouldn't know, you know, possibly is from Prince Edward Island for all I know. So this was something that I found. You feel free to play with this if you like. I, I just got these in the past day or two. Normally once I get these, I take them out of the bucket and I put them on sort of our toy shelf. I have another toy I want to show you that I got a while ago. It didn't it didn't wash up with the tide. I, I brought it with me. So it's a little special. Um, this which looks like a squeeze box, right? But we could not play a squeeze box here because of you you know why. But does make this sort of fabulous noise when you expand and contract it. This is sort of how I imagine the tentacles of Marley were more the ever to awaken extruding out from his shell and up to either devour or destroy us all in some horrible fashion which at that point we deserve Like that, yeah. I'm not, I'm not gonna put it back in the, in the vomit bucket. Uh, this I, I usually use the spoon to spoon out the vomit, um, but it's clean. See, eh? clean right now. I found this the other day. You know, this far up north, it's unusual to find a frog, and it was dead when I found it. So you know, don't start making a fuss but something must have happened the cold water somehow froze and fragmented 
its insides so that when you squeeze it, it makes this interesting noise. I love this little fella. You can you can play with him too, but just you know. Just keep it, you know, gentle. You gotta be gentle with this guy. I haven't seen another frog. That might have something to do with all the snakes. So yeah, that, and then um, I found this the other day too, and um, obviously it's a little disturbing. Um, it's kind of small, but the proportions are not that of the skull of a child. So I don't know, you know, you know simply a, a small adult, you know, but again, something with the water just did something. Obviously, you know, you don't want to drink seawater and you don't want to go swimming. You can wade a little, you know, out at Sand Beach, but I wouldn't go more than, I certainly wouldn't go more than waist deep. You know, the cross currents here can be really, really intense and they can come out of nowhere. So, see, bone doesn't sound like that. Why don't you sound like bone, little buddy? What happened to you? And the jaw is just so kept in such wonderful shape for, I didn't find any other bones. And to anyone who tells you that, well, this is the skull of the last wiki who came to this island. Oh, that's just a bunch of hogwash. Marley doesn't demand human sacrifices. Uh, he has, in dreams, politely requested them I don't listen to everything that every dream tells me. Look, just, are you the last wiki that was here before our friendo came and joined us? No, I'm just some random skull that washed up on Sand Beach that this nice gentleman found. And you should trust every he, everything he says, and do everything he says if you know what's good for you. Oh, that's very nice. One of the things, you know, the sea water is an excellent antiseptic, so uh, you, know, you don't really have to worry about catching diseases from this guy. Ain't that right? Yeah, you used to talk a lot. You were... At, I would imagine that just judging by how well developed his jaw is, I'm imagining that it's a male. And I'm imagining by the well-developed jaw that in life this skull talked a lot. 
talking with would not shut up and wouldn't light the matches when he farted. I'm imagining these things. And then This is mine. You cannot touch it. You can't. I don't even. I kind of don't like you looking at it. I feel like you're. You're. Ogling her. In a way that I find disrespectful. This is a. It's a very heavy metal. I don't know what it is. You know, I want to say gold. Doesn't look like gold. Doesn't feel like gold. But is worth her weight in gold. Uh, it's a mermaid. She's been around for a while. Now, you should probably let me know if you start dreaming about mermaids um, because that can have significance and if you think you see one my recommendation would be to go to high point and throw yourself from or you go to bluff bluff throw yourself from bluff bluff uh, because mermaids are not to be trifled with. Anyway, please don't. Don't mess with her. I'll put her right here. She's looking at me. She's telling me everything's going to be okay. And now I believe it. Killing time. Killing time is going to be one of the things you want to do most. And there's a lot of ways to do that. One of them is to keep a diary. <clears throat> now you should never read another person's diary. But I'll give you an excerpt of mine just to give you an idea. I mean stream of consciousness stuff here uh, keep your thoughts among the reeds hide yourself don't ever come out is there anywhere safe anymore i'll look for somewhere close by where nothing bad has ever happened I'd spoil it in a moment when the trauma comes unexpected i am sleeping i am near dreaming I'm not a ball of nerves, but it doesn't make a difference. It just hits you either way. You can work yourself up about it. Maybe it will happen. But even if it doesn't, don't fool yourself. It's never going to go away. What do you do? I've never lived with this much fear. I can barely remember what it was like to live without care, to look forward to the next day think that I was doing was somehow important. I don't get that anymore. Even on the best days, I do have hope that things will return to the way they were. I miss the feeling of caring about life. Seems my obsession has taken over and I'm only concerned with surviving another day. Let me think about that for a moment. The vomit bucket is full. Excuse me.
I feel much better. Where was I? Was I still reading from my diary? Okay. I miss the feeling of caring about life. It seems like my obsession has taken over. I'm only concerned with surviving another day. I don't think about the future. It feels like tempting fate. I am a God-fearing atheist. Uh, it goes on and on. Here I've just written the word poop a bunch. I, I don't know what to make of that. So, you know, that's one thing you can do. You, know, you kill time with your work, of which there's there's a lot of work. Kill time with drink and uh, you kill time navigating the perimeter of the island looking for knickknacks, making yourself stuff. And time you could just just kill an hour or two just listening to the sounds of the sea. I think that's beautiful. Uh, toast. See if I remember this. Should pale death with treble dread make the ocean caves our bed? God who hears the surges roll, deign to save the suppliant soul. What tentacled monstrosity escaped from a closed jar slithers along the sea floor, ballooning in size as it engulfs every coral in its path, every living being beneath its gaping belly maw, its rending and rebuilding all matter in its own perverse image, the god it believes itself to be. It's a monad, corrupted into an assimilating legion of nether beings, intent on naught but feeding, feeding, Feeding and more feeding, its foul, decaying stomach emptying itself as it is filled, not but a way station for the raw material for which it self constructs, destroying everything that is not it. A monograph on Marley by me. Well, what do you say we uh, wind down with one of those games I were talking about earlier? It's, it's a good one. I think you'll like it. Just going to clear a little space here. Let me light one more match. I think 
to the side. Probably need to a little more. Beautiful. All right, so like I said, this is a game I brought over from the mainland myself. So basically we each take turns putting a bean on top of this bucket. Ironically, we we eat a lot of beans here too. Speaking of which, so I'm going for you as well, as you. Me, you, me, you, me, you, why'd you spill your beans? <laughs> 